we are Christians. And I want to talk about that some more. Christians. Amen. Christians. Christians are a body. A body. We are a body of believers. Amen. A body of believers. Now, now God gave me that word concerning your health. Take it serious. God can cancel out anything. I don't care what the doctors have said. You know, um, when he gives me a word like that and it, and it stays with me, I have to be obedient. I, I thank God. Let me tell you something. I thank God that that my health is where it was. Um, I had no idea that my blood pressure was up. I just want to tell you this. Now I'm, I'm going to get back to this. I had no idea. I had no, when I went to the doctor about my knee, I had no idea. I had no symptoms. Nothing was wrong with me. I was well. I might have had some symptoms. Didn't know it. One was because you know, but but when I when I went and and, and they found it, and we got it. You know, we got it where where now we are uh, free from uh, that. You know, it, it it took it took getting away from the, so much sodium, and it took not eating as much, and it took it took moving around more. Walking, I walk in my, I've got an area in my downstairs area, in my upstairs area, and then I get out of my bed and go walking. Why do I do that? Because I want, I don't want to live and suffer, and I don't want to be a burden to anybody. Amen. Amen. So I'm doing the best I can, but I thank God for restoring my health, and He's done that for you today as well. But you gotta, you gotta take the steps to. When God rebukes something like that, there's something going on. And, and he's saying that you will live and not die. Not only did he say the day that you will live and not die, but you won't suffer with the heart attack nor a stroke. You got to receive that too. You have to believe when God, when God, I'm just a, a vessel that God uses. I'm just a messenger. I can't do anything but say what God has already spoken. Amen. So I'm decreeing that you're healed in your bodies. Amen. Amen. I, I want to talk about the Christian. I want to talk about Christian. I mean, it's a lot of people claim to be Christians, but they don't know what it means or uh, either they they got an idea but they're not they're not they're not um, they're not operating in it uh, God said something that was amazing I'm always asking God questions like God why you know what happens or how do we get this to, to function I know his word cannot return him board and I know he can't lie but God said something to me he responded and he said you know my people still perish for a lack of knowledge that's an unwillingness to learn I mean ushers you can just relax. You have to have a willingness. I'm going to ask God to let you learn today. Amen. Learn. Because, because if you can get this in, then you can get what God has. This is a very important message. I, I know that he's given it to us because there are many of us who really, you know, we jump in it and we've got a really fast moving, we're in a fast moving life. And so we'll jump in it and we'll, we'll have an idea. Or we'll think we're right. We'll think we'll know. And then all of a, all of a sudden we don't know anything. Amen. You should benefit from being a Christian. Anybody hear that? You should benefit from being a Christian. Your life should. Christian, Christianity has a standard. You can't change yourself. God has to change you, but you have to cooperate. And you have to know that there are changes that need to be, be made. Uh, the standard is the word of God. But we have to trust. Listen, we have to trust God's word and then grow. Now get that. We have to trust God's word and then grow. Now, I want to give you the body of Christ. That's that's the message, the body of Christ. When we say we are followers of Christ, we don't follow Christ by our own power. Okay. When we say we're followers of, get this now. See, a lot of people think they can follow Jesus. You can't follow Jesus. There's so many things I cannot do still. You know, there's so many things where I'm not perfect. I have not perfected. But I keep pressing toward the mark of the high calling. So many things you can't do either. This is, this is the, the saddest part about it. It's when I deceive myself and I'm thinking I'm doing something and I'm not. There's a word in scripture. It's humble. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. You know what that means to humble yourself? It means, God, you are greater. I'm created by you. I come to you in total and absolute respect and honor. That's humbling. He said, I'll raise you up. He has to raise us up in Christianity. I want, I want to get into this now. Uh, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for every soul that is here. We thank you for every soul that is online. We thank you, God. We bless you. We glorify you. We worship you. We praise you, God, because they belong to you. But, Father God, we need understanding because you said in your word in all of our getting, 
Get understanding. We need understanding. So, Father God, I, I yield to you. I yield, and, and, I, and I trust that you will teach through me, preach through me, do whatever you've got to do through me. None of me, all of you. And, Father God, those that are the soothsayers and they came to judge the word, and let them, I rebuke that devil. Let them receive in the name of Jesus Christ. Let them realize that you need Jesus. You are part of them. You need Jesus too. And so, Father God, you didn't bring us in to judge the word. You brought us in to hear the word. And so open up our ears that we might hear. Not only hear, but receive it, believe it. Open up our eyes that we might see it, Father God, perception. Father God, then open up our hearts that it might take in and it might change us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I want you to go to book with, the book of Acts with me, chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. I'm going to go at verses 5 through 8. Acts chapter 1, verses 5 through 8. Amen. I, am, am I, are we going to put my scriptures up? I'm going to wait on y'all to get my scriptures up. Can you get them up today? Is that something that, because every time I say them, I be wanting them up. <laughs> I want them up so you can read them. Amen. Can y'all get them up today? Is there something that's broken? Acts, oh, it's up. Okay. Every time I say them, I want them up. Uh, the reason I want them up is because I want, the, I want the words to the songs. I cannot praise God when I don't know the words to the songs. I mean, that bothers me. I, I mean, it's like, oh, God, really? You know, I mean, I don't know the I don't know the song. I mean, I don't want to just stand up here and pretend like I'm singing. I want to worship God, man. Give me something. <laughs> and we got it all set up where we should be able to do it. Amen. So, man, I want you, don't you, how many people like to read it? Read it? Can you read it? All right, let's read it. <laughs> We're talking about this body of Christ, guys. Watch what it says. I want you to get this now. I said this is the statement I gave you last. When we say, leave my words up, please. When we say we are followers of Christ, we don't follow by our own power alone. We follow in the body of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Ghost. We follow in the body of Jesus Christ because it's so foreign to us. We can't follow it on our own. We can't follow it through our intellect. We can't follow it through our logic. And we get lost in it. And then it seems like it's not working. Why am I defeated? We're defeated because we need to get understanding. So this is what he said. He said, for John truly baptized with water. Watch this. But you shall be baptized, what? With the Holy Ghost. Not many days. And you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me. Now, when you're baptized, you're going down into a system that you are not familiar with. You're becoming somebody different. It's a life death. So if you've ever been baptized into Christ, he said you're being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Baptized is when you go down into something and you come up as it or it is in you. And it begins to change and mold and shape you. Amen. So, 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 so he says this. I'm just reading five, five verses five and verse eight. For, for, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days hence, but you shall receive power after the what? Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to utmost. That's what it's all about. Being an effective witness for Jesus Christ. Not just in word. You can lose it right there. It's in my walk. It's in my talk. It's in my interaction. Anybody listening? Amen. See, you can't, sometimes you can't win a sinner with words. How in the world can a deep, deep sinner hear the word of God? They're going to feel condemned. No, no. You got to, it's got to be something about you. God's got to be able to put something on you. And then when they see you, they see Jesus. And then it'll, it'll make them want to follow Jesus. It might, it might, you, might have to, you might have to sometimes extend the standard of Christ. You, 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 might, you don't never know who's watching you. Now, now, if I don't know the standard of Christ, I can't extend the standard of Christ. So I need to get to know what is his standard to love. He said, you can take the, he said, you can take the, the commandments, you can hang them on this. I mean, the, the prophets and the Lord, you can hang it on this. To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy mind. Love your neighbors as yourself. Now, understanding that is critical because sometimes we come out of what we know, what we, where we come from, 
And we say, I did it because I love you and nothing in it is love. Somebody need this guy. Please open up ears. What we have to do is we have to be willing to learn how the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost operates and yield to him. See, we still have all flesh. See, we have flesh, we have spirit. So we have to be able to see, see in order for life to really happen as a Christian and for you to experience the power of God and experience the changes that God can make in your life, we have to be yielded to the Holy Spirit that he'll produce fruit through our lives. See, love is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Kindness is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. See, you can be offering some kindness, but it will stop if it's somebody you don't like. That's how you know it ain't God. See, real kindness is tried when it's somebody you don't like. Real love is tried when it's somebody that's hurt you. See, you can love them, but you ain't got to hang out with them. What does love do? Love will pray for them and say, God, please deliver them. Please set them free. Please take them. What is this? Can you take that off? I don't know what that is. is it, I'm not in Luke. I was in Acts. Okay, thank you. That was Luke. Okay. Did I say Luke? I did. I said Luke. Okay. Well, I ain't saying no Luke. <laughs> I love you. But no. No, no, no. I love you. Well, we're going to go to First Corinthians now, chapter 12. Got to look at the body of Christ. Thank you all for putting it up there. Uh-huh. Thank you, evangelists, for helping them. them. Let's go. Let's go to First Corinthians. I want you to look at what is you know we are the body of Christ. Let's look at how God has positioned us as the body of Christ. Amen. How Christ has positioned us. We're going to do verses twelve through twenty-seven. I want you to really see this. First Corinthians twelve, chapter twelve. Okay, you know it now. <laughs> let's start over. First Corinthians twelve, verses twelve through twenty-seven. Really. <laughs> First lady. <laughs> Here it is, guys. Here it is. He says, now look at, let's look at who we are and let's try and get this. For as the body is one and has many members and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. Get this now. This is important. For by one spirit, we are all baptized into what? One body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free. I have been all made to drink into one spirit. Watch this now. I have no and have been made all to all and made to drink into one spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. It's capitalized, right? It's capitalized. So he's talking about the Holy Spirit. He's, we, we, we've been made to pour life out of the Holy Ghost who indwells us. Okay? For the body is not what? One member, but many. Now watch this, brothers and sisters. This is important. It's critical. If the foot, verse 15, say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. It is therefore, uh, is it therefore not of the body? No, no, no. If the foot say, because I'm not the hand, this is this is really fighting amongst us. This is this is what happens. You have believers that that, that walk around and they want to be somebody. You can't be the hand if you're the foot. But we still need the foot. If I if I want to be the foot and I'm the hand, I'm going to cause some people to fall. Get that in your spirit. That's heaven. The biggest issue with the body of Christ is not wanting to be who I am. The dysfunction. See, in the body of Christ is the power of God manifested. Listen, there's power for healing, there's power for deliverance, there's power for provision, there's power for change. But if I don't want to be who I am, then it's discombobulated and it can't function. Anybody listening? The body of Christ is what we are in order to see the manifestation of the power of Christ 
The body has to be functional as it's supposed to be. No matter who I want to be, I, all I am is who I am. And who I am is good enough. Who you are is good enough. But you got to stop tripping. You, 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 I, I, I can do that. I can sing. <laughs> I can praise. You can. I mean, you can sing and you can praise. But sometimes it's not for public display. You, no, it's not funny. You, 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 you'll cause disharmony. Or sometimes you do need to get there, but you need to get like, like. Hallelujah. Can y'all hear me? Wait a minute. Let me come on. Hallelujah. Hey Amen. Listen now. The two. Amen. If, if you're an usher, sometimes you need to be quiet. Why you got to be seen all the time? If you're a teacher, what does it mean to be a teacher? You can only teach when God gives you the opportunity. And then you mad because you can't teach more? He don't need you to teach more. This is all God's business. See, if, if we could be who God called us to be and we could get in here one million percent, we would see a lot of souls going to the kingdom of God. Why is that important? That's what we're all about. We are called from the world to exemplify Jesus Christ, to live out the person of Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. He said, you shall be witnesses unto me. He didn't say all this rose garden stuff. I'm going to give you a brand new car, a house. I'm going to give you some more stuff. He said, I was poor so you might be rich. But he didn't say, I'm going to give it to you. He said, you got to go get that if you're going to get it. He wasn't talking about that. He said, Father, I came to do thy will. When you're saved, you need to be about God's business. What is God's business? God's business is giving people hope in him. Salvation is about delivering folk out of danger, hurt and harm. Do you know when you are not who you're supposed to be, you can connect yourself with people that will keep you where you are? They'll mess you up. They'll be telling you, you, you should be doing this. I see it in you. And then you'll try to do it and you flop. Where are they? It wasn't God who told you. Who told you? Somebody else. I want to I want to look at it now. He says if the foot say, I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not the hand, so I don't want to I don't cooperate. All right, verse 16. Let's go to verse 16. And if the ear shall say, watch this now, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? Watch this now. If the whole body, verse 17, were an eye, and this is the sad part is let's say you are a part of the body. But let's say you take a sabbatical. You know, my knee, my knee is here being, it's being healed. But my, my knee don't need to take no sabbatical. It needs to be all the way here. So, so imagine you now, let's say you, you are important. Let's say you're the neck. And you say, I'm going to stay out of church for two months. I got so much to do. I got to go see about mama and them and daddy and them. I got to go see. That ain't of God. You just rebellious as H. Okay. I should have just said that. But, but it's what it is, is you don't respect. See, you're walking around wanting everybody to worship you and, and acknowledge you and appreciate you. But you ain't even got enough sense to get yourself in place so God can acknowledge you and appreciate you. You did this. You didn't call yourself. God called you. You're predestined by God to be in the body of Christ. I wish somebody could hear this, Jesus. Your blessings. One thing I notice about Lisa and myself is we're faithful. Listen to this now. And it's no, it's no bragging. It's true. But God has brought us now, we've been faithful in this. He's brought us a mighty long way. There are certain things I'll say, Lee, you know, I want you to do so. So she said, that ain't my call. That's on you. I said, wait a minute. Listen now. This is what I think you should do, baby. Listen, I go all deep. I try to catch you in pillow talk. <laughs> she don't be that sleep. She don't be that tired. She say, no, that ain't. God ain't told me to do that. I'm so glad she got that kind of sense. I was talking here. See, see, 
See, see, see, sometimes you want folk to do, see, this is what, the, see, the body of Christ should have power. We should have delivering power. We should have healing. We should have restoration power. You, you, I mean, well, well, the body of Christ do have it. But can we work it? Can we work it? Anybody listening? I'll, I'll show it to you. See, a lot of people are living defeated. I, I believe, I still believe God heals. But I think he'll give you the wisdom. Like some people want God to heal them so they can get right back sick. God don't play games. He said, don't make your, your stomach your belly. I mean, your king. So, so if you make your belly your king, it controls your whole life, you're going to have some sickness. If you drink too much, you're going to have some sickness. If you smoke too much dope, you're going to have some sickness. Because, 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 see, you can say, God, heal me in the body of Christ, but, but the healing is there if you stop doing what you're doing. When I went, when I went and they took, they took my, they took all my blood and all that stuff. And they said this, this was amazing. Lisa had, she had to take me because my, when I started taking that medicine initially, they really started rushing me. So we had to go to the hospital. And I was sitting in the hospital, and they, they took me back there, and I was, man, oh, God, I hope. I said, oh, Jesus, ain't no telling. What's up? What are they going to find? You know, it was just real, right? Ah, nothing. Pure nothing. All the levels were up. Everything was fine. Nothing. Heart is fine, but, but the blood pressure. And this is what got me was when the doctor came in to see me, she said, you are dehydrated. We was on the fast, so I wasn't doing nothing. I was really trying to believe God. And, and uh, I don't know whether you was on the fast meal or not, but I know I was on the fast. And um, she said, well, one thing we've been able to do is get that blood pressure down, hadn't we? I looked at her, man. I started giving God, God glory inside of me. Because he had what? Answer my prayer. See, God is still a prayer answering God. But you have to be real with God. Because you are the body of Christ. Let me give you some more. Can I give you a little more? And then we'll let me show you this. Now, this is important. Verse 17 says, if the whole body were the eye, where would they? Where, where, who, where, where's the hearing? If the whole body were hearing, where were the, were the, were the, were the smelling? This is the key. If, if I be who God called me to be, my life is better. Let's say somebody in here and let's say you're sitting on a gift of true worship. Just worship, worship, worship. But it's limited because you think somebody might say something about how you worship. You're holding up progress. You know you're real. You know you can get down to the nitty gritty. But you're so caught up that you won't fine tune your skills. I was... I was this week we were we was trying to get the events and stuff together, and I was on the phone. And I either I was here, and, uh, and 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 one of one of the members either called. I was talking about her. She called, and I was telling the suspension. I said, "We got to have an event planner. We got to do this. We got to have." It. And we've been, you know, in and out. I mean, I'm, that's me. I'm, I'm, we, if we can't fight, if it ain't right, I'm not gonna hold on to it. So this particular person called, who I was talking about at the time. And their enthusiasm and joy was so real to get it done. Now, you can go to some people, you'll say, you know, I, I want you to, because God revealed you, that's, this is the part of the body that you need with you right here. Now, he'll give you somebody else if they act fool. He'll give you somebody else. They'll have the audacity to tell you, but you know, Pastor, I felt this way about it, and the last time I did, you didn't do it right. That's the reason you got to sit down. Hear me in love, don't be offended about this. You have to always be ready to try again. As the body of Christ, see, it's God's gift in you. You don't own it. And you're going to hold it back. And then you wonder why in the world you're going through all the things you're going through. You wonder why your finances are messed up. You wonder why you're going through so much on your job. You wonder why you can't do better. Because you're sitting on something that belongs to God that can free you from to have a life that's more abundant than you can imagine. When you don't give God what's his, you don't get what's yours. 
And the saddest thing is, you don't even have enough. You don't know what's yours. He said, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. When you, when you give God, you see, it might not be something you think it is. It might be something that, that is greater than you. It ain't yours. He put it in you. He, he uses it. The Holy Ghost owns it. I should sure see. I should sure see. Let's keep on going. He says this. So, and then, then, then this is another thing. Hear me. This is not, don't, don't take it hard. Don't, don't take it as judgment. Take it as, as chastisement and correction if it's you, okay? Get, get it, just correct it. Let, hear this. This is another thing that's important, brothers and sisters. When you have been called out by God and you have been placed in the body of Christ by God, it's best to say, God, what will you have me to do? Versus, I ain't going to do that. Do you know I found out that God can teach you as you go? I always use the example of building this church and had never done any kind of anything commercial. And the pieces that God would give me every day that I came here to build it. You know, I had to become the contractor. The contractor quit on us and I had to become the contractor. And every day, I mean, I've been around my uncles. God has sort of set me up a long time ago and we had, you know, seen them build and foundation, understood. But every day he would teach me something new because I was willing to obey. Don't ever tell God what you don't have or what you can't do or what you ain't going to do. He'll make you better if you let him. Amen. Because you are the body of Christ. Oh, God, I've gotten away from you. Bear with me. Pray for me. I'm going to speed up. I'm going to rush. You're in the rush. I'm only joking. I'm not going to rush. Listen, let's go, to, let's, go to verse, let's go to verse 19 now. Verse 19. Well, no, no. Verse 18. We, we, we had missed that one. I threw the whole thing on. But now has God set the member. Do you know, do you know when, you, when God has lined you up? And you get out of line, you'll get into some mess. You end up with something in your life that what the heck? How the heck I did that right now? Somebody. Listen, when God has lined you up and you get weary in doing it, and you quit. You end up in a mess. Your mind will start. You'll get arrogant. I, I talk to some people sometimes, and they were so committed and dedicated. Now they're so, I mean, that's their right. They're so arrogant, stink, stink in God's nostrils. You know, pride stinks in his nostrils. You can say, look, let me can I tell you something. There are tremendous benefits in being faithful to God. Amen. You don't know it's real if you've never experienced it. And if you've, if you've experienced it to a minimum, the level I'm talking about is getting past you, but I'm asking God to let you catch it. It's amazing. It's amazing what God can do if you hold on to him. Stay faithful to him. Stay loyal to him. Stay committed. It don't matter. Nobody is perfect. Nobody's going to get it right all the time. But if you can stay in the word, stay, keep, if you say, well, you know, God, I'm going to be a part of this church. Keep your commitment. Be there. You'll see God do some amazing things in your life. Pay attention while you're here. Don't come in here with no attitudes and mad and upset and going to prove a point and acting crazy. This is the house of God. You can't, you can't fight God. I want 18. But now, read, look at this, verse 18. But now has God set the members. Watch this, who did it? God has set the members, every one of them, in the body as he has pleased. Who did it? You didn't do it. It's not coincidental that I'm your pastor. Man, Lisa was talking about, she was talking about how much she appreciated all the members and all the love we got in here. This morning, and I thought, I said, you know what? God knew exactly what he was doing. As I think about you guys, I, he knew it. See, see, it's not coincidental. See, this, we can't read 18 one more time. But now has God set the members, every one of them, in the body. When you get out of place, you miss God. Can I tell you something? God is all powerful. There's nothing too hard for God. All things are possible with God. When, when, when you, let me tell you something, uh, either, listen, 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 when you get really hurt in ministry, sometimes you get hurt. Jesus got hurt. You know, it hurt him to have to go to that cross. When he was saying, Father, take this cup away from me, Jesus was going through some pain. But he didn't stop. A lot of folk, when they get hurt 
in the church, they stop. Or they get hurt by the pastor, they stop. You, you, know, you know, your mind should be on the Lord and trusting him to speak through me versus me. That's how you get the benefit out of it. If you, if, you, if you look at me too close, sometimes I'll go deep if you worth it. God will send me deep in your life. But if I was you, I would check myself before I judge you. It's not pleasurable sometimes dealing in some people's lives, pulling them out of hell. They fight you. But if you would listen to this now, listen, God brought you because this is what he know he prepared for you in order for you to be who he called you to be. He, you know, he said, I, I, I got plans for you. He said, I want you to have life and I want you to have it abundantly. He said, I want your soul to prosper. He said, I got plans for you. He's not lying. The, the more you humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, the more he can raise you up. Somebody, I, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm going to have to pick this back up. Somebody, let me tell you this. God is talking to you because he wants to do something with you. Listen, it ain't, it's nothing public. It's not like he's going to put you on this platform and you're going to do something deep. I didn't say you want to do something with him. I said he want to do something with you. What do you want to do? He want to collect some stuff for you. He want to bring some things together for you. He want to help you. He want to deliver you. Somebody needs this. See, you've been wrestling with something. And now what you've done is it got so that seemed like your prayers weren't working. You really don't even pray about it anymore. But God did that with Abraham, you know. Abraham said, we got Ismael. We didn't got an old God. <laughs> It's not unusual for folks who say they love God to give up on God. See, God put you in his son's body. He knew exactly what he did. He knows exactly what he's doing. And he's got you here right now. And he's speaking out of my mouth telling you, hey, look, I heard your prayers a long time ago. I ain't forget. Now I'm getting ready to answer it. The saddest thing in the world is this, listening, is to have a hostile disposition, be ugly, and God answer your prayer, and you don't know this. Here's an example. I'm, I'm going to be through. Here's a story. Here's a man, and he, he had been a part of ministry somehow for many years, and, and, and he had gotten very discouraged. Nothing would happen. He was not really identified as anybody. He was not noticed. But one day, he was launched into this position. And it was a great position. God had held it and he put him there. He had held him that long just to put him in a story in a certain place. Somebody knew this. He had gotten weary. He had began to, his, his attitude was changed. His faith. And what he had done in the meantime was he had gotten in an, an affair. And so when he when he got in the position and it was, a, it was a, a, a huge position. He didn't give up the affair. In other words, he had gotten so mad with his wife, he didn't like her no more. He didn't get that right. He didn't get none of that stuff right. But God had, see, God never forgot who he was. God had a time and a schedule for him to be on Front Street. God did it. He got in this humongous position, built a million dollar mansion and put the secretary in. He got tired of waiting on God. So all the discombobulated stuff. Uh, see, when you when you walk with God, you're going to have some hurt. If you marry, you're going to have some you're going to have some disappointments. You're going to have some some challenges. You're going to have you got children. You're going to be hurt. You're going to go down sometimes. Life is real. And life and your body going to lead you to situations that ain't good for you. I don't care how much you love God. If you real, this is this battle is real. So he didn't, he had this and then he built this match. So the wife had, they both had sort of slipped. So she got drunk one night. Pastor and his, she got drunk. She burnt the house down. The million dollar house. He didn't even know he had bought, she didn't even, he didn't even know she had bought, he had bought the house. He didn't even know that she knew he had bought the house for this woman. Remind you now, what is he? He's still a pastor and he had gotten way up. He got a phone call. 
When you're walking by faith, you can never tell where you are. You need to have integrity. Don't love, listen, don't get yourself untangled. Don't be too entangled with nothing that you can't let it go. Be real clear with folk. God bless me. I'm going to cut you loose. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Don't, don't, that's powerful, isn't it? See, you, when you're walking by faith, it might seem like everything is horrible. Man, this I've had some times where, you know, we, 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 we've seen things not so sweet. I mean, even, even when we, I was, I was believing God, I said, you know, I got real content in my house right here up the street. And, and, and I, I never forget. And after I got every one of those ceiling fans up, God said to me, he said, move. <laughs> I mean, we were content. I mean, it was, we were smooth operating, buddy. We had the alarm system up in there. I was, <laughs> I was happy at home. He said, move. I said, Lisa, God say move. So she began to, somebody need this. She began to take me and look for houses. I said, that's not, that's not it. So she took me in a neighborhood where her dream house was. I said, why did it take you so long to get me over here? I said, this is it. It wasn't based on what I had. It was based on my faith. See, my faith had gotten me to a place that I didn't know. So we got in. And I'm, I'm trying to give you something as a body of Christ. God will work it out if you stay with him. We got in, we got in there, and the, the first house was, I don't know how much that house was, but, man, and they wanted to put so much down. Man, Lisa had the biggest argument. I mean, man, she was, she was going, you cannot be playing with these people. So that means she didn't know where we were either. We got we get we we said that in the house. We're back in there. We found the house. God made it so easy. He worked everything out. And we and we got, see this is the thing, brothers and sisters. See, when you're walking by faith in the body of Christ, stay faithful. Get in here. Hear the word. Don't mean you ain't gonna stumble. Don't mean that sometimes you 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 won't fall. But God will get you up. He'll get you up over and over again. God don't have a time limit. His forgiveness is eternal. And God is, is complete. It, it's not something. He said the only thing you don't get forgiveness for is for blessing of the Holy Ghost. Anybody listening? It's what y'all have to do. I got to confess my sin to God. And then he'll say, if you wrong as a Christian, as a believer, if your lifestyle is not conducive to the will of God, say, God, I'm wrong. Because sometimes you can't just walk away. Are you listening? As a believer, you have power, but you got to be in step with who you are. A true Christian never have a right to stay out of, out, of, out of church. Why would you say that? Because we strengthen each other. You are important to me. I'm important to you. We strengthen... We are the body of Christ. I, I got to come back. I, I, I'll start with verse 19 next week. I think. Amen. I, we got to quit. You know, if you, if you try to put out too much, folk don't get nothing. I'm done. Amen. Let's pray for me. We'll come back next week if God let us. I had another message ready for next week. But we're going to stay with the body of Christ. Amen. Listen. Listen to me. I'm done. Remember, this is going to be important to you. No matter what you go through, don't, don't agree with the devil concerning any sickness. No matter what you feel, don't analyze and say, oh, no. Say, you know what? That don't belong to me. Say, the Lord thy God rebuke you in the name of Jesus. This is this week's assignment. This is your assignment. Remember this, brothers and sisters, that you didn't put yourself in the body. It's most important to you to find out who you are and get busy doing it. Because if you don't do for God, you're going to do for the world. You're going to be somebody's slave. I don't care who you are. If you, if you, if you refuse to do for God, you're going to do, do for the world. You can't help it. None of us own ourselves. We are subject to the spirit realm. This is the last thing I want you to remember, brothers and sisters. That when you, when God, when God has placed you somewhere, 
Humble yourself enough so you'll benefit from it. Don't be arrogant. God has a divine order in the church. When I say, say brother and sister, and when I say, you know, minister and deacon, and it's a reason. Because the flesh is real. God has a divine order. God has a standard. Submit yourself to God. Humble yourself to God. As the body of Christ, and you'll see the power of God. You'll see change. It's something so hard, you want to give up. It's like you're just a failure. But the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. There's no failure in God. We are failures, but there's no failure in God. Go back to God with your whole heart and recommit yourself. Don't ask nobody's permission. You ain't got to take nobody with you. You go. They'll come. If they're supposed to come, if they're supposed to come, you have to sh- they gonna, God going to shake them from you. But if they go away, he got something new. Don't be mad and don't do nothing crazy. Sometimes God will expose something. You need to look at it and get it on at your life. But let me say this. All that has been said is not really possible to do without God. And if, and if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord, the Bible says that the only way to God is through Christ. I want you to recommit yourself. I want you to rededicate yourself. But the only way to to God is Christ. No man can come to the Father except by me. That's the only place I've ever found that. I hadn't found it in Buddha. I hadn't found it in Muslim. I hadn't found it. I mean, in, uh, none of them. Only, only in Christianity. Only, the, the, the only, Christianity is the, only, is the only one that tells you how to get to God and gives you the way. The only way to the Father is by me, said Jesus. What does that mean? Well, the Bible says that if I will accept Jesus as the Lord of my life, I shall be saved. I shall be made a part of the family of God. If I accept him, what does it mean? How do I accept him? Well, I think it's simple as this. God, forgive me for my sins. Jesus Christ, I need you to be my Lord and Savior. Please come into my life. Come into my life, not just my heart, my whole being. Please come now. I receive you. I'm open to you. Live in me, dwell in me. Once you believe that he's coming, by faith say, you know what, Jesus? You are the Lord of my life. I do believe that God raised you from the dead. And Father God, I thank you for eternal life. Amen. It's that simple. God made it easy. God made it. It's not, it's not hard. Brothers and sisters, don't let people put you in bondage. But you need to learn what it means. We're going to find out who we are. What does it mean in, in, in the body of Christ? How God brings forth gifts. See, see, we have gifts in us. That's by the Holy Spirit. And so we, we need to look at the workings of those gifts. They're ministered by the same Christ. That's what we're going to be doing. We're going we're to stay with this until God is done. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something that's very important. When you accept Jesus Christ as Lord of your life, you need a, you need a church home. You need a place where you can grow, you can develop. If this is what God wants you to be, the doors of this church are now open. You can come forward and we'll receive you in. You can also join online. But you can come forward. You can come forward. Don't be ashamed. Everybody stand to your feet. Don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you before the Father. If God's telling you to come forward because you need to be a part of the church, come. Come. Now, you can also join online. You can go to our website. It is www.twogcm.org. And that, that T-W-O-G-C-M is sort of long. So, www.twogcm.org. You can join that way. But brothers and sisters, you need to become a part of it. You need to be baptized if you've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord. And that's going to make the difference. It's going to make the difference. And I'm not going to leave you there. I'm going to, I'm going to give you an opportunity to give because the Bible says the tithes. A lot of people are really broke because they don't get this. The tithes are holy. They belong to God. When you're a believer, you need to be obedient to God and do what he says to when it comes to giving. Now, you, you, you give your time, you give everything else. Charity is not tied. Anybody listening? I gave, you know what I did? I went ahead on, I gave um, so-and-so out there on the street on the corner. You, go, you mean you tell me you gave your tithes to somebody who needs some money? Who, who don't have anything? No, tithe is for the storehouse. It's to keep God's operation going. So he's to bring the tithe into the storehouse. So they'll be made in my house. 
He said, you can prove him. He said, you can test me with that. He said, I'm going to open the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing, you won't have room enough to receive. He went on to say, he said, give, and it shall be given unto you. How? Good man, is pressed down, shaking together and running over. God don't lie. Everything I try, it works. Some people are scared to try. At the same dimension you try is the same dimension you get. If you really want to come out, give greater than what you've given. Somebody need this. Try it. I was in the Air Force, and there was this guy, and he would always give a tithe. I got to give my tithe to get paid. I got to give my tithe. Now he, I mean, he was thug, he was thug sitting, but he would give me that man. He said, I got to give my tithe. I said, Why you give my tithe? Because God blessed me. I said, God bless you to give your tithe. I said, You don't go to church. He said, but I still got to give my tithe. He <laughs> did. It it's a principle. It works. Man, he never had no lack. So one day we was playing pool, and I said, man, let me, let's, 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 you know, we did it back then, I wasn't saying. Whatever. <laughs> and so, you know, we get on the pool table, and we'll shoot a little bit. So I'm going to have some fun with him. I said, man, what do you want to, let's, let's do a little. He said, I bet you 10000 I said, 10000 what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was, I mean, he was serious. I said, no. I said, man, I, I, I was doing only joking. But he's had because he work a principle. You can't start a principle and then stop. It doesn't. It's not good for you. And don't try to work a principle you don't believe in. Like if you don't believe in time, don't give them. It ain't gonna work no way. Cause God loves a what? Cheerful yeah. giver. You know, a cheerful giver is one who love God for real and trust Him. So you're not under the rest to give your time, but you need to. Amen. Amen. You can't outgive God. People think that's a cliche. That's not. Try it. You'll see. Amen. You'll see. Listen, I love you, brothers and sisters. I pray God's blessings on you. Um, you can give your tithe. You know, these are the containers. You can give online. Um, you can you can text. Let me give you this. Text the word here. Well, I text tithe. I text my I put my amount in there. This is the phone number, 678-661-5332. I put the amount, I put tithe with the S, I put offering, and it goes. Quick. <laughs> Real quick. So you can tithe. That number is 678 661 5332. You can tithe. You can mail it. P.O. Box 686, Hampton, Georgia 30228. I mean, you can mail it. You can, you, can, you can bring it and put it in these containers. But you need to do it. It'll bless you. It'll bless you. Listen, when you look at your finances and look at your accounts, and then if it's nothing in them, apologize to God. Anybody hear me? Say, so God, I, I'm, a, I'm a believer, and you said you're a Jehovah Jireh. And look at this account. Don't be afraid to tithe. Give God his first. If you work, don't the, don't the federal government, the state government, do they get theirs? They get it before you get your check, don't they? God don't take his because he know if you do it it's going to bless you amen Amen. brothers and sisters I love you I thank God for you I pray that you're blessed expect God's blessings this way when you go back in your homes expect everything that's not of God to leave not people spirits (laughs) don't try that Spirits, unclean spirits to get out your house. Because you've got an anointing. When you walk back in your homes on this day, it won't be the same. Amen. Amen. Everything that's unclean got to go. Why? Because we've been together as the body of Christ and we are empowered to do the work of God and destroy the work of the devil in the name of Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. God bless you. I love you. Amen. Be blessed.